Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for August the 14th. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading is found in Psalms chapters 53 through 58 and Romans chapter 11 verses 1 through 12. The title of my devotional is Be Exalted, O God. And we see these words found again and again in Psalm 57, and we're going to be looking at 57 verse 5, which says, Be exalted above the heavens, O God. Let your glory be above all the earth. Now, David calls out for help when he flees from Saul and is hiding in a cave. Here is the anointed king. Back in chapter 16 of 1 Samuel, we see that um, Samuel anoints David as king. But here he is in a cave hiding from the disobedient King Saul. And so where is God in all of this? And what is David's response and cry? His response and his cry, the cry of his heart is that God would be exalted and his glory would fill the earth. David seeks refuge in the love and faithfulness of God who is exalted above the heavens and the the earth. Um, And Hope and praise come together in this psalm. We have descriptions of persecution and pleas for help. Psalm 57 verses 1 to 4 and verse 6. They they explain how difficult of a time he is having. Um, but he's, his hope is in the Lord. And we see in verse 5 that these, these descriptions of persecution and And please, for help, give way to hope, praise, and desiring God's exaltation over all. And verses 7 to 11 go on in great expansion of his heart to tell of what God has done and who he is. And he already is saying how he will give thanks to God for what he has done. And and specifically what he will do. This verse is also repeated in Psalm 57 verse 11. Calling for God to be exalted above the heavens and his glory above all the earth. Why does the psalmist pray for God's exaltation? Why is that the cry of his heart? And there there are two sides of the same coin again. Like the same idea is being uh, kind of like synonymously declared, be exalted and let your glory be above all the earth. Uh, the glory is that God would be made known everywhere. Um, so in the above the heavens, in the highest place and throughout the world is his, his cry. Well, why is that his prayer? Why will that answer his cry for help? Um, Well, David desires that God's rule extend completely over everything, including his situation. And we could see this back in the story of of creation. When when God rested on the seventh day, uh, God declared that creation was very good in Genesis 1 verse 31. The Sabbath is is a picture of all things being under God's rule, at peace and rest, in line with his purposes and plan. Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 um, lay this out, how God sanctified and set apart the, the Sabbath as God is ruling and reigning over all. It's a picture of the kingdom of God, a picture of everything being in its place and all things being at peace. That's where we should strive to live. And that's the call. That's the prayer of David as he's hiding. He's desperate that God would reign, that God would show his power, but also that he would bring his peace. Even as Romans talks about in, um, well, Paul talks about in Romans that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what God brings and what he brought to creation, what he brings to us uh, in Christ. Uh, One commentator explains, as God comes in his glory, evil and its effects are vanquished and the faithful affirmed in their enduring loyalty to God. The psalmist's prayer is ultimately answered in Jesus. The psalmist prays that God would send from heaven and save me. In verse 3, he says, God will send forth his loving kindness and his truth. And in Christ, um, who was full of grace and truth, God sent our Savior so that all who see Jesus behold his glory. Um, In Jesus' coming, the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. The King is coming to the world. 
Jesus promised, if I am lifted up, in other words, also exalted even, if I am exalted from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. There's a double entendre here in terms of it's talking about Jesus on the cross. It's also talking about Jesus in terms of being exalted. Both of them are needed. Both of them are part of his exaltation and both are part of his glory, glorification and giving glory to God as well. God's glory is extended over all the earth as Jesus is lifted up, as Jesus is exalted, as Jesus is also proclaimed. That's what we're called to do as well, to declare his glory to the ends of the earth. God's glory is further manifest through his spirit, whom Jesus pours out on his people. We are privileged to not only have his glory revealed to us, but to also play a part in extending his glory to the ends of the earth. So Jesus comes to dwell in us through the Spirit, but also through the Spirit we declare God's glory to others. And so we see this re being reproduced. We have a very small part. It's God. It's God who has done this work in Christ, and Christ who is pouring out the Spirit, who works through anyone who will submit their life to him and follow Jesus. And Jesus is the one who is lifted up. Jesus is the one who is proclaimed and is exalted. So do you pray that God would be exalted in your life, that Jesus would be lifted up as you submit your life to him? Jesus is exalted. How do you see God's glory displayed in your life? Do you see it in what God is doing, how he's transforming your your world and your your situation, how he works in you, through you, powerfully? Um, do you see God giving you opportunities to declare and to lift Jesus up. Because when you lift Jesus up, God's glory is displayed. God's glory fills uh, the world, our world. And it is one person at a time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you, your great plan is that you would be declared, that you are the answer to all of the world's problems, to know you to be in relationship with you, to be saved by you, to be loved by you. Oh, how great you are. No one who trusts in the Lord will ever be disappointed. And our heart's prayer, our heart's cry is that you would be exalted and your glory would fill the earth. In your name we pray. Amen.